take it anymore, I tell you. I can't take it. The guns. The bombs. The explosion. All those blank faces. Now, and take the... it easy. Take it easy. But I can't take it anymore. I tell you, it goes on and it goes on and on. The guns and the bombs and the explosion. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. <laughs> You're new to the outfit. This is something we all have to go through. You can beat it, kid. Believe me, you can beat it. Yes. Now you go out there. You go out there and you face it like a man. Yes, sir. Things must be getting bad now. They're starting to list all the wars in the sports section. <laughs> you know, I sometimes wonder if wars aren't created just to replenish a diminished supply of heroes. Because I keep hearing that today. There's no heroes anymore. There's no heroes. I don't know if that's necessarily true. Because you find heroes in the most unlikely places. Like when I was a kid, comedians were my heroes, you see. So you never know. I mean, I think it's important to have contemporary heroes. Because then you see them... You see them as human beings. You relate to them as humans, and uh, you see their human failings and human faults. In school, they would always emphasize historical heroes, which was okay, but they never portrayed them as human beings. They would build them up to be almost gods, you know? And then when you found out something human about them, some human fault, you'd just be crushed. I mean, here's some guy you idolize because he built this, designed that, sculpted that, painted this, wrote this, thought of that. You think, my God, this guy was a genius. He was immortal. Must have died a saint. Nope, drank himself to death. <laughs> what? Well, if the booze hadn't got him, the syphilis would have. <laughs> he had syphilis? Oh, yeah, caught it in prison. <laughs> prison? He did time? Yeah, beat up a blind man real bad one day. <laughs> beat up a blind man? Well, it wouldn't have happened if the blind man would have just let go of the cup. <laughs> he was a thief? Well, not really. He just needed money to support his habit. He was a junkie? Well, wouldn't you be if you married your mother? <laughs> but he was my hero. Well, he might have been a hero to you, but he was a real ass to his neighbors. <laughs> they tried to hang him night before he died. Terrible to be disillusioned like that. That's where I felt about Thomas Jefferson. Now, for you students of American history, Thomas Jefferson was one of the founders of America. Now, he also possessed slaves. But this is a man that sat down and wrote the Declaration of Independence, which starts out by saying, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Now, how could he write that and still reconcile in his mind to have slaves? I still can't understand that. People say, well, he freed him when he died, but hell, he died at 83. <laughs> I'm sure the slaves were real happy to hear about that. Well, Mr. Jefferson just died and said you're all free. Well, that's mighty kind of a master. I'm 75 years old, ain't got no job, ain't got no money, and now I ain't got no goddamn place to live. <laughs> Terribly disillusioned. I was also disillusioned when I found out those legendary figures of the Old West that Hollywood built up to be uh, great heroes weren't really heroes at all, not in reality. In reality, they were just common criminals, thugs and hoodlums. I think that's why those spaghetti westerns were always so popular, you know? That's why I liked them, because they, they kind of portrayed the old west as, as real. Even the titles were real. The good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> kind of summed up the old west, you know? Only trouble with those films, see, they were shot in Italy, so naturally everybody spoke Italian. Now, uh, when they were shown here, they had to dub on the English voices, you see? Which was fine, except a lot of times the voice didn't always match the character.
Thomas Mill. He's here. <laughs> Who's here? Yeah. Who's here? Who's here? Yeah. Who's here? I don't know. Just some guy coming down the street. <laughs> stranger. Folks say it's how you're a pretty mean hand with a gun. Well, why don't we just find out how good you are? Let's see if you can hit this dollar bill. Hmm? Pretty fancy shooting, stranger. Ain't never seen nothing like that. Hey, I threw up a dollar bill and there's only 90 cents here. Commission. to these parts? <laughs> what did you have in mind? Oh, Maria, leave him alone. You <laughs> filthy little tramp. Go on, go on. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Go. Oh. Mm. He should do something about that mouth. Oh! oh. You know about low-down yellow-bellied skunk? You've been cheating me! <laughs> Why, thanks, stranger. Think you're fast with a gun? Want to try me? <laughs> Are you looking for me? Hey, man. How do you do that? Bad editing. <laughs> you 
You made a mistake there, gringo. The guy you shot was my key brother, and now I'm gonna shoot you. The cemetery's full of men that said that. and quiet? No. A town where I can relax my face. <laughs> Damn. Should be here any minute. This place is a mess. Oh, what am I got? Oops. My niece, I'll never hear the end of that. Oh, no. Uh, God, I'm not even half, half finished. And she's here. Coming! Coming! <laughs> right there. <laughs> okay, it's the best I can do. <sighs> Hi, Rose. Hello, Mr. Monteith. I'm sorry I'm late. I had a bit of trouble with my last gentleman. Oh, yeah? Yes, well, usually it's once over lightly, yeah. but today he made me get everything out and give it a good polish. <laughs> yeah, well, nothing special today, just the usual, huh? I don't know why you bother with a cleaning lady, Mr Monteith. This place always looks as if it's just been done. Now, what kind of nut is going to clean up for his cleaning lady? <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised, a lot of people do. Well, why? Well, embarrassed at the things I might find. What things? Ooh, braziers, mini skirts, high heeled shoes in the shower, <laughs> panties behind the cushions. You wouldn't credit it. Not that I'd find anything here like that, Mr. Monteith. You're far too clean cut. No, don't call me that, please. I hate being called clean cut. But you are clean cut. No, I'm not. Makes me sound like a Boy Scout with a vasectomy. <laughs> one of those. Oh, no. no, as I told my wife, when I agreed to tie the knot, that's not what I had in mind. Oh, so they don't cut things off then. No, Rose, what they do is they tie... What am I doing? <laughs> Discussing vasectomies with my cleaning man. Well, you've got to talk about it to somebody if you're going to have it done. Rose, I'm not going to get a vasectomy. I don't even have any kids yet. I mean, what's the point of going in a battle with a gun that shoots blanks? <laughs> oh, very profound, I'm sure. But if you're going to start a family, it's about time you got yourself married. Oh, no, Rose, I've lived that fairy tale, believe me. You know, the one that starts out, once upon a time, there were three little bears. Mama bear, Papa bear, and Mama bear's lawyer. <laughs> Don't be so cynical. I'm not cynical. I'm just not ready to be tied down yet, that's all. I mean, life is like a wine tasting. One must sample all the vintages to find the perfect bottle. Don't talk dirty. <laughs> I'm not talking dirty. That's poetry. There's no poetry in rhyming slang. That's no way to find yourself a nice girl. Ah, who wants a nice girl? You do. 
Well, I go out with a lot of nice girls. Ooh! <laughs> nice girls don't leave these behind. <laughs> oh, uh, those were here when I moved in. Oh, <laughs> you shouldn't waste yourself on loose women, Mr. Monteith. Oh, the woman wasn't loose. Uh, the pants were. <laughs> Forget all about these flighty actresses and models and all that. Get yourself a nice stable girl. Rose, I'm a comedian, not a jockey. <laughs> no, no, get yourself a nurse or a teacher or a secretary. Someone that could look after you, because that's what you want, looking after. Rose, you sound just... Hello. Oh, hi, babe, how are you? Yeah, one o'clock, that's right. Okay, see you then, huh? Bye. Another loose woman? Nope. Tight secretary. <laughs> Dixon and Dunbar, fresh fruit importers. No, I'm afraid Mr. Dunbar isn't in. Can I take a message? Received your shipment. Apples were fine, loved the plums, but could have done with a firmer pear. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Hello. Hi. You get many calls like that, uh, people asking for a firmer pair? I also get people asking for a great date and a juicy navel. <laughs> well, I'm just here to ask a favor. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm not dressing up again in the gym slipping yellow wellies. <laughs> Come on. How about a fireman's hat and a wet T-shirt? <laughs> no, this is really, it's about lunch. You can't make it. No, no, it's on, it's still on, as long as you don't mind sharing lunch with uh, Milton Fry. Oh, you mean the gossip columnist? Yeah. yeah. He wants to interview me over lunch. Do you mind? Actually, I've always wanted to meet him. Oh, are you a big fan of his? I hate him. I just want to see what kind of creep could write that sort of rubbish. <sighs> well, look, it might be rubbish, but I'm telling you, millions of people read this guy every day. Dixon and Dunbar, fresh fruit importers. No, Mr. Dunbar's not in. He'll be back tomorrow. Bye. Sir? Yes, Mr. Dunbar? Mr. Dunbar, you come in here, please. I have a huge pair for the fines. Yes, sir. <laughs> won't be a minute. Well, uh, wait a minute. Didn't you just say this guy wasn't in? Well, when I say he wasn't in, I didn't mean he wasn't in. I meant he wasn't in. Say what? <laughs> well, when he says to me he's not in, then he's out, even though he's in. On the other hand, when he's really out, he's out. Unless his wife calls, and then he's in. Conference. <laughs> and not to be disturbed. Very good. You'd make a great secretary. And you know which great secretary I'd like to make? <laughs> Not until now, you smooth-talking devil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Secretaries, I'll tell you, they never cease to amaze me. They are the best front line of defense ever devised, you know? I always thought the military should make great use of them, because I'm telling you, there's not an army in the world that could get by them. I say is calling. The opposing army. Do you have an appointment? No. No, it was uh, sort of a surprise. Well, they're in a meeting right now and unavailable for warfare. Oh, now look here, lady. We've come a long way to get here. We got up at the crack of dawn. Half of us got seasick on the way over. Our feet are soaking wet. We are in no mood to be kept waiting. Well, I'm very sorry. That's not my problem. You come in here unannounced, without an appointment, trailing seaweed and stinking of fish, and you expect everyone to drop everything at your command? Well, I'm sorry, it's not on. I mean, if we operated like that, we'd have every Tom, Dick, and Army in here. <laughs> I've had orders to come here and engage the enemy, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Come on, man! Yeah! Nobody! Now, you just wait one moment. I've had my orders. No visitors and no phone calls. I will inform them that you are here, and they will buzz me when they're ready to see you. Lady, you don't understand! No, you don't understand. 
Nobody gets past this desk until I say so. Oh, now look what you made me do. You made me break a nail. <laughs> Miss Packer, we're accepting calls now. Yes, sir. And, sir, the enemy's here. Oh? What do they want? They want to attack you, sir. Very well. Send them in. <laughs> right. You can go in now. Well, thank you. <laughs> Come on, men! Ah! Look, I don't mind you asking this fry along on our lunch date, but if you spend all your time thinking about your work, it's going to have an effect on you. Oh, that's silly. No, it isn't. Huh? You take Mr Dunbar. He's in charge of pears, right? All he thinks about is pears. Pears, 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 pears. Morning, noon and night. Nothing but pears. So what are you trying to tell me? That if what? I keep doing this... I'm Miss just... Nichols! <laughs> <laughs> on your way back for lunch, will you pick me up a pear? <laughs> Something wrong? Uh, no, I was just thinking how lucky it was you don't work in prunes. <laughs> Is this place still as hard to get into? Oh, it'd be no problem. They're expecting me. Yes? Hi, I'm Kelly Monteith, and I'm, uh, I'm here... <laughs> He recognized you, eh? Of course not. The uh, wind blew the door shut. Mm. Are <laughs> <clears throat> oh, you again? Yeah. I thought I told you to clear off. Well, I'm Kelly Monteith. And yes, I... I know. Oh, you uh, recognize me, huh? No, you've just told me. <laughs> he has a TV show on the BBC. Really? BBC One or BBC Two? BBC Two. <laughs> <laughs> if you've come for the license fee, the check's in the post. I haven't come for the license fee. I'm here to have lunch with Milton Fry. Ah, you're the one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'd better come in. A terrible table. Don't you have something a little better? Yes, but not for you. <laughs> this is where Mr. Fry always interviews his victims. <laughs> Many a promising career has been killed off here. <laughs> Thanks a lot, huh? Did he say victim? Of course he said victim. Don't you know that's what gossip columnists have? Victims. They're always poking their noses into people's private lives. You see, when he gets here, he won't want to know anything about you. He'll just be interested in why we're having lunch together. Lucy, Lucy, stick to fruit importing. This is show business. I know what he wants. He wants to ask me about my show and my career and how I got started and everything. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, really. Hello, Kelly. Oh. Milton Fry. Hello, Milton. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and who's the pretty young lady? Oh. I don't think my name is very important. <laughs> Why so coy? You two got something to hide? Hide? Who, us? Oh, God, of course not. No, Lucy and I are, well, just, uh, good friends. <laughs> just good friends, yeah. See? <laughs> well, Milton, I just want you to feel free to ask me anything you want. Um... Uh, what do you want to know about? Well, what I'd really like to know about you is, yeah? uh, where did you meet Lucy? <laughs> oh, well, uh, as a matter of fact, at the studio. We met at the studio at my show. See, I have a television show, which, of course, you know, you wouldn't be here otherwise. <laughs> it's called The Kelly Monty Show, and it's on the, uh, uh, Milton, uh, you want to write this down? <laughs> See, he's not interested in anything you say at all. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy's a great kidder. <laughs> Come on now, Milton just wants to hear about my show. He... No, 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 no. I, I want to hear more about that first meeting with Lucy. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> well, uh, Lucy just thought it was a great show. You... Oh, it was a funny show, Milton. You'd have loved it. I had this opening when we came Actually, on. I didn't even want to go. I almost had to be dragged there. And then someone took me to the cast party afterwards, and that's where I met Kelly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Lucy came up to tell me how funny she thought the show was, you see? No, I didn't. Huh? 
<laughs> I came up to tell you that you just spilt your drink down the front of my dress. <laughs> now, that's a funny way to meet somebody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I'm supposed to be a funny guy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> tell me, what exactly do you do, Lizzie? Oh, she's a student of comedy. <laughs> yeah. I'm a secretary to a firm of fruit importers. Yeah, but in her spare time, she's a student of comedy. In fact, she thought my show was probably Lucy, one of the do funny... you really enjoy being a secretary to a firm of fruit importers? Hey, well, Milton, so... if you ever need a firm pair, Lucy, here's your girl, boy. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I wouldn't have thought that that was uh, enough for a girl like you. Oh, it's enough, Milton. It is enough. <laughs> Hard job, right? Fending off guys going bananas about their bananas, you know? Getting a raspberry about the strawberries. Actually, to be honest, I always wanted to be a singer. She always wanted to... <laughs> oh, my friends say I sound just like Barbara Streisand. Barbara. Hey, you know, we did a sketch on that once. God, it, Milton, you'd have loved it. It was the funniest have sketch we've ever had done this... anything professionally, Lucy? No, but I've got all my dresses and my arrangements. Mm -hmm. I just don't know who to go to. Hey, Milton, you ought to come down and see the show sometime. Boy, you'd find a lot there to write about. Uh, thank you, Kelly, but I think I know what I'm going to be writing about. Okay. A little wine? Thank oh, you. yeah, I'd love some. Thanks. <laughs> Boy, that Milton Fry wasn't kidding. Two hours I spent with him, giving him great material, and Lucy ends up giving him great headlines. Hmm. I don't know, maybe she's right. Maybe I'm working too hard. Sure, I figured after I was separated, I'd throw myself into my work. Good thing I wasn't a grave digger. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I should get some kind of hobby. Pick up a sport, maybe, huh? Tennis or golf or... Nah. I never was any good at sports. I don't know. Not even in school, you know? I don't know why. Coordination. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Hobby. Uh... Still, if I had a hobby, I just don't want to become one of those kind of people who work so hard he doesn't even know what day it is. Ah, oh, but I'm far from that. I wish those people would hold it down over there. What a dumb time to throw a party right in the middle of the week. <laughs> what are they doing, launching a missile? <laughs> Can't be. New Year's Eve? What happened to August, September, October, November? Maybe she was right. I guess I am working too hard. Only one way to remedy that, huh? If you can't beat them, you join them. <laughs>